Welcome back. And in this video, we're looking at the truth about speed in GTA Online. But what do I mean by that? Well, no one's ever claimed that the physics engine in GTA 5 is super realistic. I mean, let's be honest, this physics engine was designed by someone who thought Einstein was the guy who scored the equalizer in the 1966 World Cup final. He didn't. So let's take it as read that the physics in this game only makes sense if you think the Earth is flat. You know, controlling cars in midair, flipping them back over when they fall over, all that kind of stuff. So this isn't a video about why the physics isn't real. It's a video about why the cars are so slow. Now you must know you've seen the cars, the top speeds of the cars in this game are atrocious compared to their real life counterparts. So what I wanted to do is make a video to find out why that's the case. And if you watch to the end you'll see there's a perfectly good reason why Rockstar designed this in the way that they did. And it becomes perfectly obvious as soon as you look at it. To test this I needed two cars. I needed two fast cars, cars there was a lot of data about. So I started with the one you can see on screen now, which is the Adder, which in real life would be the 250 odd mile an hour Bugatti Veyron. So in order to make this work, I took the Adder and recorded a lap, but I quickly realized I needed some measurements to work this out. I needed to work out the acceleration between different speeds. I needed to work out the braking, the cornering speed, all that kind of stuff. And the only way I can do that, I had to use the Rockstar Editor. And anyone that's used the Rockstar Editor will know why I'm sighing. So I had to do an interior shot so I could get the speedo, but then take the same footage and edit that as an exterior shot so I could match it up to the footage recorded from the game. Because as I later found out, the Rockstar Editor exports at a different frame rate, which is really helpful. Thanks, Rockstar. So after all this, I had all the data I needed. So all we needed now was what I believe to be is the world's first ever maths-based training montage. And what this all told me is there is a very unusual discrepancy in the way cars behave in GTA Online. First of all, what you need to count is that the speedos only go up about half as far as the ones in real life. So for example, the adder tops out in real life at over 250 miles an hour, but the speedo in the game tops out at about 120. So any speeds that I was mapping against the speedo I would need to adjust those accordingly. So then you look at the different performance through the speed range. And up to 60 miles an hour, the performance in the game is nearly twice as fast as it is in real life. Up to 100, it's two and a half times as fast. Up to 130, it's 2.8 times as fast. And up to 200 miles an hour, the acceleration in the game is almost three times as fast as it is in real life. But this is when it gets odd, because when you get above this, the top speeds in real life are actually twice as high as they are in the game. So how do I square that circle? Well, with a bit of googling and a bit of help from some fabulous YouTubers about how to use speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve, I came up with half a solution, and using that, I've managed to put together a lap, which I feel somewhat represents what it would look like in real life. But for this, I needed another car, and not any car would do. So I opted for nothing other than the second best car ever made. Obviously the best car ever made is the Mini, and that's not opinion, that's a fact. But in my view, the best car ever made, the best interpretation of what a car could be at the time that it was made, 
is something that takes the best of current technology and the best of emerging technology to make something that is the absolute best that it can be and I think this car is that and I don't think it will ever be beaten so yes that car is the McLaren F1 or as you will know it in the game the Progen GP1 so here we go with my speed adjusted lap in the McLaren F1 and I'll be honest it gets weird really quickly so let's just let it count down and off we go and as we accelerate here we're going really slowly but we're already at 60 and we're already at 100 miles an hour and in just a couple of seconds we're going to be at 150 there we go and that's because the way the speed works in this game means that the acceleration in game is vastly exaggerated compared to what it's like in real life so for this lap what I've done is I've had to slow down all the acceleration zones and speed up all of the top speed zones but then use a speed ramp to make it smooth between the two cornering seems to be pretty much on par from what I can see but but I would definitely need another maths training montage between now and then to do something more with cornering speed. So as you can see, it's already looking pretty obvious why they messed around with the speeds, because this feels weird. And I have checked the maths on this several times, so I'm pretty sure this is mostly right. But what you end up with is a car that corners well, that has great top speed, but really bogs down in all the acceleration zones. Now when you think about how you play GTA, a lot of the time you're in the city, you're doing missions, and you really don't want a car that feels too realistic in the city. And even that play GTA 4, will know that GTA 4 had a much more realistic physics engine. And whilst in some ways, that was really nice because it made it quite fun they kind of got away with it because it was a much smaller map now as we come around this corner we're going to slowly inch up to that top speed and then we'll talk about some of the things that I had to ignore when I was making this video one of them is the effect of curbs so obviously those two curb hits that you just saw would have absolutely totaled this car in real life and that would have made for a very short and very dull video so there are definitely some aspects of the physics i've had to ignore like the way cars behave when they're in the air the way they behave when they hit things and some aspects of the cornering but as you can see now we're already up to top speed and while we're in top speed this is roughly twice the speed you would be expected to do it in the game and can you imagine trying to control these cars at this sort of speed in the game no neither can I so while we've got a minute as I record this video I am currently sitting on 999 subscribers so go on smash that subscribe button you know you want to you know you want to if you're enjoying what you're seeing drop a like if not drop a dislike drop a comment I answer as many comments as I can and then again you can see the effect as we go around cliff yeet corner we slow down and we slow the video down so we get a normal cornering speed but as soon as we come to accelerate it really has to bog down again because the acceleration in the game is so exaggerated but then as soon as we get up close to top speed the top speed becomes under exaggerated is that a word you know what i've just decided it is a word this means you go from a game where you're trying to control something that feels really slow and clunky through the town but then ridiculously fast out of town and i honestly think this answers the question as to why they messed around with the physics so much in gta 5 because of the way they put the map together what they were essentially trying to do is take a map of los angeles 
cram it together into a much smaller area, make it enjoyable, make it fun, but also, considering how long ago this game launched, it was 2013 that this game launched, they really had to consider things like draw distance and load time. So they had to cripple the speed of the cars because otherwise everyone that ever played it would have had pop in all over the place because you would be reaching assets in the game before it could possibly load them. Other dedicated racing games don't have the same problem because they have a dedicated map, it's relatively small and it only has detail either side of the map. This thing has detail anywhere. Now yes I'm doing a lap here but there's nothing within the game that stops me just veering off left and going through the wind farm and just going to do something else in the middle of nowhere and if I decide to do that then the game needs to make sure that all the assets that are over on the left that I can't see are all loaded in. So all in all, I actually think that Rockstar did a really good job with the physics in this game. They had an impossible task, really, if you think about it. They had to create this huge map, they had to make it feel realistic in part, so it needed to look realistic, but if you make it too realistic then the physics would actually make it boring. So they had to exaggerate some parts and then dumb down some other parts with the ultimate aim of providing something that's always fun because wherever you pick one of these cars up you look at this car it's great through the city it still feels fast on the freeway even though it's only doing half of the speed that it would do in real life and can you imagine trying to take this bridge at this speed no don't fancy it so anyway as we come round here, you'll see that the adjusted lap for the McLaren F1 was 7 minutes 14 seconds. Now that compares to 9 minutes 35 for a standard lap in this car. So it's 2.5 minutes faster around this track. So I hope you found that useful and I will see you in the next one.